Hi everyone, Mike here again. In this video, I'm going to show you how I turn this image into this stylized portrait, all in Photoshop and with no painting abilities. You ready? Then let's start the art. No, I still don't like it. So the first thing I usually do when starting an edit is clean up skin and hair. I'll usually use the spot healing brush to clean up hair, like hairs that are crossing the skin that I don't want to see, or hairs on the head that look messy or are distracting, and for flyaways. I'll use the regular healing brush to clean up any blemishes on the skin or any other area that has texture that I want to preserve. The spot healing brush can sometimes blur texture, so I tend not to use that for skin. Although with this image it's not going to matter too much since we'll be smudging the skin later but it's just a habit that I have from years of beauty retouching and photography. For larger areas that don't have a lot of texture, like on the shirt, you can use the clone stamp on a low flow. I have it set to 15% here and I'm using it to remove some wrinkles. Again, it's not super necessary since I'll be smudging it later, but like I said, it's a habit. And a good one to have, I think. Next, I want to add some brightness to the skin on the side facing the camera to make the lighting look a little punchier. I shot this in a pretty small space just outside some elevators in a building in New York City, so there wasn't a lot of room to move the strobe back to get a harder light. But that's okay, I can fake it here in Photoshop. So I'm gonna create a brightness contrast adjustment layer and turn the brightness all the way up and the contrast all the way down. Then use Blend If to remove the effect from the shadows. I switched the layer blending mode to luminosity so it wouldn't affect the color saturation. Then I inverted the mask and painted in the brightness with a white brush on a low flow to the area that I wanted to make brighter. 10% or below usually works well so you can build it up slowly. There's no special reason I use brightness contrast. I could have used curves or levels and gotten the same look. Like so many things in Photoshop, there can be several paths to the same destination. Now I'm going to add some dimension by dodging and burning. Because I'm not doing any high-end beauty retouching here, I'm going to keep it simple and just create a new blank layer, put it on an overlay blending mode, and then switch between a black and white brush on a low flow to dodge and burn on the highlights and shadows to make them brighter or darker where needed. I find that a flow of around 2-5% to usually works for me. Now I'm going to exaggerate the dimension even more by creating a light luminosity mask and applying it to a curves adjustment layer. I don't know the exact steps to creating luminosity masks because I've always used an action that creates them for me that I got from somewhere online. I don't remember exactly where. I'm sure if you Google luminosity mask action, you can find plenty to download for free. Now the action that I have creates several variants of luminosity selection and I'm going to pick the one that shows just the brightest highlight selected on the face and load that as a selection. Now when I create a new curves adjustment layer, it will automatically apply that selection to a mask and therefore only affect those specific highlights. I'll play with the red, green, and blue channels of the curve until I like how the highlights look, and then lower the opacity of the curve layer to around 70%. Next I'm going to add an effect via an action I have called Ethereal. It's part of an action pack from photographer Laura Jade called Laura Jade Studio Editorial Collection. It creates a group of adjustments that add some cool blue and purple tones to the overall image and gives the shadows that faded vintage -y look. I'll lower that effects opacity to about 60%. Then I'm going to add a custom lookup table or LUT that I made a while ago that basically just warms up the highlights and adds some cooler tones to the shadows. I pretty much always use LUTs on the color blending mode, so that's what I'm going to do here. And I'll lower the LUTs opacity to 15%. I'm going to add another lookup table now. This one's called IWLTBAP9370. That's descriptive, isn't it? I'm sure those letters stand for something, like the name of the LUT pack or something like that. Whenever I download LUTs, I usually change the names of them to something else for the sake of organization because I have so many. Guess I didn't for these though. Anyway, I really like how this one affects the vibrancy of the colors, so I'll put it at about 90% opacity. 
Now, as you can see, that last LUT added a weird outline around the shadow on the wall. Not sure exactly why some color toning will do that. It'll also sometimes add some more, which it did a little bit on this shadow. I'll take care of that the same way as the edge, by making a new blank layer and using the clone stamp tool set to a flow of 15%. I'll just go around the edge and get rid of that bright line, then find some of the more artifacts in the shadow, which show sporadically as a tonal transition with a hard line. I can just smooth that out with the clone stamp tool. Next I'll create a stamp visible layer by holding shift option command E on a Mac or shift control alt E on a PC. Then open up the camera raw filter and bring up the shadows, blacks, and clarity sliders a little bit. This will bring out some more detail in the shadows. I then opened up the layer styles box and used blend if to remove the camera raw effect from just the highlights. I did then go back into the camera raw filter because I felt that I needed to bring the shadow sliders up just a tiny bit more. And then I felt the effect was kind of too much in the hair so I just added a mask and painted it out there. To make the circle it was pretty easy. I just created a new blank layer, changed its blending mode to overlay and used the circular marquee to draw out a circle making sure to hold the shift key to keep it a perfect circle. Then I filled that selection with a red color and positioned the shape where I wanted it. Now I of course want the shape to be behind the subject, not on top of it. So to get it behind her I need to separate the subject from the background. To do this I'll turn off the circle layer and create a stamp visible layer again. That shift option command E on a Mac or shift control alt E on a PC. I'm going to use this layer to cut the subject out from the background. I'll first make a base selection by hitting the Select Subject button at the top of the Photoshop window area. If you don't see the Select Subject button, it's because you have to have either the Quick Selection, Magic Wand, or Object Selection tool active for it to show up. After I've got the base selection, I'll then hit the Select a Mask button to go in and refine the mask. And once I've got a good selection, I can add a mask to the layer and it will automatically apply the selection. And we now have the subject isolated from the background. I could then move the subject layer above the circle layer, turning the circle layer back on, and now the circle is behind the subject. I now want to add a bluish glow behind the subject's head to separate her more from that red circle. So I'll just make a new blank layer above the circle layer, change the blend mode to soft light, select a blue color, and with a soft brush I can just paint a little glow outlining her profile. After that, I noticed that there were some dark patches on the subject's face around her nose and at the corner of her mouth that I wanted to get rid of. To do that, I'll just make another blank layer at the top of the stack and use the clone stamp with a flow of about 15% to just paint over those areas. Now this isn't exactly the professional, industry standard way to retouch skin, but like I said, since I'm going to be smudging all this soon, it's not too important to perfectly preserve the skin texture. Now I'm going to make three curves adjustments to use for creating a rim light along the subject's face where I put that blue glow. The first curves adjustment will just be to add a slight overall blue tone to the image to help tie it all together a bit. I'll just adjust the blue channel and bring the middle of the curve up, then lower the layer's opacity to about 10%. The next curves adjustment will be to add some brightness by just pulling the middle of the curve up a bit, then lowering the layer's opacity to 10% as well. The third curves adjustment will be for the blue tone. I'll adjust the red and blue channels until I get a blue color that I like, then lower the layer's opacity to about 78%. Now I'll invert the mask of the last two curves adjustments I made so I can paint those in separately along the edge of the face. I'll also paint them in along the edge of the nose, lips, and around the eye. Basically wherever I can see that the light reflected off the wall behind the model and back onto her face, creating a faint natural rim light. I'll use that as a guide for painting in this blue light that I'm adding. Once I'm happy with how that looks, it's finally time to add the painted look by smudging the entire subject. I'll start by creating another stamp visible layer, that's Shift Option Command E on a Mac, Shift Control Alt E on a PC, selecting the smudge tool and making sure the strength is set to 30%, and just start smudging on the stamp visible layer. You want to just smudge enough to blur out the textures, but not so much that you start distorting the tones or the edges. Just follow the natural flow of the face, if that makes any sense. Make sure you cover all the skin, clothing, eyes, etc. Everything but the hair essentially. We'll be applying an effect to that separately in a minute. This next step won't add a whole lot to this image in particular since the original photo is of a model and they tend to have pretty good skin. 
But when you use the smudge tool on skin that's highly texturized, you'll notice that even though smudging the skin removed the skin texture, it created a whole different kind of texture. This can also happen if you apply a lot of sharpening to skin before smudging it. That's when I like to use the mixer brush to try and blend that texture some more so it looks smoother and more painting-like. To add even more realism to the painting effect, I'll use a brush that's meant to mimic the bristles of a paintbrush so that you can see it in the strokes. Brushes meant to be used to paint hair are a good option as well. You can find all kinds of free brushes on sites like BrushEasy or DeviantArt, so check there if you need to download any brushes. Also, you may not notice any of those brush strokes right away when using the mixer brush with a custom brush, but you will once you add some sharpening to it, which is what I'm doing next. I'll create another stamp visible layer and go under the filter menu to Smart Sharpen. For this image in the Smart Sharpen dialog box, I'm going to use Remove Lens Blur with an amount of 500% and a radius of 9 pixels. I'll add a black mask to this layer so I can paint in the sharpening just where I want it. I mainly want to apply it to the skin, clothes, and the eyes, being careful to not paint the sharpening too much on any edges where it creates a halo. Now to make the hair look painted. To do this, I'm going to apply the oil paint effect to a sharpened layer of the hair. The reason for sharpening it first is so that you get really defined hair when you use the oil paint filter. So the first thing I need to do is create a stamp visible layer of everything that's below the smudge layer. So I'll turn off the visibility of the smudge, mixer, and smart sharpening layers and create the stamp visible layer there. I'll move that to the top of the layer stack and then turn those layers back on. Then duplicate the stamp visible layer and apply a high pass filter to it with a sharpness of 2.5 pixels and change the blending mode to overlay. Now create another stamp visible layer of everything at the top of the layer stack and go to the oil paint under stylize in the filter menu. For this image, a value of 3.6 for stylization, 7.2 for cleanliness, 0 for scale and bristle detail, and the lighting box unchecked looks really good. Move this layer beneath the high pass sharpen layer and turn the sharpen layer's visibility off for now. Put a negative mask on the oil paint layer and paint the effect in just on the hair and eyebrows. Sometimes it'll look okay on the eyelashes, but not always. It definitely doesn't on this image. Once you've got the hair and eyebrows painted in, turn that sharpen layer back on and drag the mask from the oil paint layer up to the sharpen layer while holding Alt or Option. This will duplicate and add the mask to the layer. If it needs more sharpening, just duplicate the sharpen layer as many times as you need. Group all these layers together with Command or Control G and name it Hair. Now I'm going to quickly crop this image to a 3-4 ratio. I really like this ratio and I use it for a lot of my work. It's the aspect ratio for medium format cameras, I think, but I also think it looks a lot like the dimensions of old painting canvases, which is why I use it. This next step won't be super visible on this image either, but I'm still gonna add it. It's a sketch effect. I've saved it as an action, but here's all it is. You make a stamp visible layer, big surprise, of everything. Then go to the filter gallery and select the glowing edge filter. I use an edge width of 1, edge brightness of 10, and a smoothness of 15. The values you need will vary depending on your image's size, but if you're working with a high resolution image, then these settings should be a good starting point at least. Now change the layer blending mode to multiply, and nudge the lines a little till you can see them outlining the edges within your image and they start to resemble sketched lines. If you don't want them everywhere on your image, just add a layer mask and paint it in where you want to see them. If you try this effect and notice that the lines have too much color in them, just desaturate the whole layer and you'll be left with only a white line. The last thing I'm going to do to this image is add one more camera raw filter. I'll do this by, you guessed it, making a stamp visible layer. Remember that's Shift Option Command E on a Mac or Shift Control Alt E on PC. Then open up the camera raw filter. I played around with all the sliders just to make the image pop a little bit more. And there you go, that's how I created this image. Thank you everyone. I hope you like the finished image as much as I do, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos like this, and please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps me out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.